Hi everyone, it's joined. Um, it's 3 a.m. in Australia here, so it's um, 5 p.m. UTC. We'll give it one or two minutes before we kick off, just for um, yeah, giving people a chance to join. Okay, well, I think we've got we've got a few, few fair few people joining. Um, we can probably go ahead and and kick off. To be honest, um, just wait for. Um, yeah, once it's on, so we can, yeah, let's, let's get going. So thanks everyone for, um, for joining and thanks for the opportunity to, to hear from us, um, a group of standards professionals and young engineers and, and um, young professionals in standardization and conformity assessment. And we're going to talk to you about STEAM standards and, and standards 101 really. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about the fact that standards and conformity assessment is part of our everyday lives. Um, and we'll talk about the IEC, the um, International Electrotechnical Commission, um, and its role in standardization um, in the countries that it represents. And this is what we'll probably try and set, up, set out and, and, and attempt to achieve. So we're going to introduce ourselves. We'll talk about how standards influence the world at large. Um, we'll talk about who, the, who is the IEC and what is the, the YPP, you might be wondering. We'll talk about how standards are used. And then we'll break for question time. Um, feel free to put questions into the, the Q&A box and we'll attempt to answer those at that point in time, we'll then talk about standards, skills for life. We know that skills for life is such an important element of um, your program. We'll then break again for a few more Q&A opportunities. And then finally, we'll close um, and talk through, um, you know, leaving you with some activities to do at the back end of this. So I'll start first. Um, my name is Colin Sheldon. I'm based in Brisbane, Australia. My background is mechanical engineering. Um, that's what I studied at university. I, my current role is as an asset management specialist. Um, and I completed what they call the YPP last year, which is a young professionals program. And I was uh, elected one of the leaders along with um, Muhammad as well. So uh, in the standards world, I'm, I'm involved with uh, explosion protection, but of non-electrical equipment. And the other thing is dependability. So making sure that the goods and the goods that we um, produce, that they're reliable and we can depend on them. So that's me. And that's a picture of me uh, on a mine site. That's my, my background. Um, we'll pass to Thomas. So Thomas, please go ahead. Thank you, Colin. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you all today. Uh, my name is, is Thomas Steigler. And I'm a research engineer with M Control, a company who designs electrical equipment for renewable resources, infrastructure, and industrial applications. One of our greatest strengths is in the design of electrical, electrical equipment for use in flammable or potentially flammable environments. Uh, these are locations where excessive heat uh, or sparks caused by malfunctioning devices uh, could cause a life-threatening explosion. Despite working at an electrical engineering company, my background is actually in mechanical and mechatronics engineering. Did you know that some of the materials that we typically think of as safe, such as wheat, flour, sugar, and coffee, can form an explosive atmosphere if dispersed into the air? So even during manufacturing of some foods, we need to be mindful of explosive atmospheres. 
What this means for engineers is that we need to be particularly careful when we design during the design of equipment uh, uh, and devices, such as the risk of causing an ignition is as low as reasonably practical. To achieve this, we rely on a series of standards that guide equipment design and set out the minimum performance requirements that must be achieved for a piece of equipment to be certified for use in an explosive atmosphere. Flammable and toxic gases can be particularly dangerous as they are often colorless and odorless. So we sometimes uh, need to rely on gas detectors to warn us if the ambient air becomes dangerous to our health. Um, but gas detectors take time to respond to changing conditions and a detector that's too slow may not be able to warn us in time. And this is where I took my first steps into the world of standards, conducting research into potential test methods for the measurement of gas detector response time. I was able to take my research and present it to the IEC Standards Committee, responsible for managing the flammable gas detector standard to help guide an improved method for response time measurement. In a, in a different field, I was introduced to ISO standards during the design of a medical ventilator in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. These ISO standards, which guide the design of medical devices, um, also provide a list of tests which must be passed for a device to be certified. In 2021, I was honoured to be named Young Newcastle Young Professional Engineer of the Year by Engineers Australia, and in 2022 was selected as an IEC Young Professional. Thanks everyone, and thanks Colin. Excellent, thank you Thomas. Uh, next, we'll, we'll hear from Mohammed. Uh, thank you, Colin and Thomas. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is uh, Mohammed Hassan from the United Arab Emirates. I have a Bachelor of Science in Nuclear Engineering from Texas A&M University in the United States and a Master's of Business Administration from the Canadian University in Dubai. I currently work as the nuclear regulator of the United Arab Emirates that regulates nuclear and radiation activity in the country. My current role as a health physicist involves inspecting any facility with the radiation sources, anything that emits ionizing radiation to ensure the safety of the workers, public, and the environment. In regards to IEC medical equipment that emit radiation, such as x-rays you see at the hospital, dental x-ray equipment, they have to be licensed by the regulator and the regulator should ensure that these equipments comply with the latest IC standards. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Mohammed. And last but not least, Jason. Thanks, everyone. Uh, so my name is Jason Shepard um, from the United Kingdom. And there in my daily role, I'm a certification engineer for a company called CMP Products, and we make uh, cable management products for explosive atmospheres. So a similar field to Thomas and Colin um, in explosive atmospheres, and uh, Thomas has explained perfectly just how dangerous some atmospheres can be when don't realise it. So it's important to make sure that the equipment to protect those atmospheres um, meets standards. And I was on the IEC Young Professional Programme last year with Colin and Mohammed. Thanks. Excellent. Thanks, Jason. And we just wanted to um, recognise that for those of you that are in the still in the right time zone and it's the 14th of October, it's um, World Standards Day. So, yeah, we're, we're really pleased to be able to share this um, milestone day with you and to be talking about standards in particular. So, um, no, thanks again. So just wanted to touch on this and talk to everyone about what a world without standards might look like. We've got some pretty uh, funny examples here in terms of, you know, steps not meeting, not being the right size or, or elevators not being the right width. Um, we've got, yeah, the, the numbers on the clock the wrong way or, or um, uh, car parks not really designed to, to meet the requirements of, of, of society. So standards play a very important role in making sure that the world can, can function. 
um, and, and really helps us to live out our lives and, and go about our day to day um, without uh, having to encounter a lot of challenges. So standards do a lot of that hidden work for us um, and conform the assessment is making sure that products and services meet those standards. Um, so that's a, just a, an example of how uh, the world works like that. So how do standards influence the world? And we're gonna talk through um, a bit of a panel discussion now and, and ask each of our, our members questions. And uh, this one in particular, we'll talk about how, you, how we see standards influencing the world and um, how they might influence our, our direct work as well. So um, we flagged, Thomas, if you've got a chance to, to talk to this, I know your work um, is heavily reliant on standards. Yeah, thanks, Colin. Um, I guess I'll start by summarising or trying to summarise it up in one sentence. Um, as we saw on that previous slide, standards touch almost every part of our daily lives. Uh, they ensure that products and services work the way that we expect them to. They make life easier, safer, and more enjoyable. Uh, as an example, when we go to the gas or petrol station, we rarely, if ever, think of the dangers associated with the highly flammable vapors we are standing next to. Uh, this is because standards have been applied to guide the design of the equipment such that they effectively always perform safely and exactly as we expect them to. Uh, similarly, standards have also been developed to define the requirements of hydrogen refueling stations, electrolyzers for generating hydrogen, the pressure vessels for storing uh, the storage of hydrogen, uh, and fuel cells for generating electricity. As hydrogen vehicles become more common, we can be confident knowing that these standards are in place to ensure these systems work safely. Standards take time to develop, however, and sometimes technology moves too quickly. Um, and in these cases, local governments, industries, or even individual businesses uh, have to take on to develop their own standards to fill the gap. Uh, while this might not be helpful, while this may be helpful for developing functional, safe, and re repeatable products, uh, it does make trade difficult as uh, local standards will differ. Uh, international standards help to reduce barriers to trade, as all consumers uh, will be able to expect the same quality and product at all service. Excellent. Well, thanks, Thomas. I think that hits it on the, it's the nail on the head. Such a great um, summary. And I might make use of uh, these slides just to talk about standards and what, what it is and, and, and what um, purpose they serve, what advantages they serve. So in the IEC world, which is where we're, uh, we're all from or have a, an influence or involvement in. So they talk about a standard being an agreed way of doing something so that it's consistent and repeatable. You always get that sort of same result. Uh, it sets minimum requirements in terms of those things Thomas mentioned, like safety, reliability, efficiency, and trust. Um, you know, why they're, they're advantageous and why we want to use standards is um, we've got um, the functionality of the products and their connectivity. So that's going to be standard standardized. Um, we can use conformity assessment to test and certify. Um, and, and then we can, uh, standards can be used by regulators and, and legislators to, to help them in the implementation of, of their line of work. And finally, like Thomas said, it helps facilitate that international trade. If there's one standard that the whole world uses for one product, um, it makes it easy to move that around borders um, and, and meet the requirements of different countries instead of having national standards um, all across the world, which makes it very expensive then um, to, for an organization to get their product certified to all those different um, standards. So off the back of that, we might ask um, the question, who is the IEC and, and what is the YPP? And we'll pass to Muhammad um, for those questions. So Muhammad, I'll let you introduce the IEC in the first instance. Sorry, actually, I'm 
I might introduce the IEC and <laughs> we'll pop to pass to Mohammed to in, introduce the, the YPP. So um, the IEC, as we talked about, it's the uh, International Electro Electrotechnical Commission. Um, it's an organization that's been around for a very long time and um, it's an international standards organization and they prepare and publish standards for mostly electrical, electro, electrotechnical uh, related technologies. So there's 173 countries involved, which is pretty much 99% of um, the world. They've got 10,000 plus standards, and these were numbers as of 2020. Um, so a massive um, catalog of standards that people can rely on. Um, 1 million plus certif certificates. And the IC has four different conformity assessment systems um, in the likes of the explosion protection um, products that, that Thomas and Jason have a very close um, uh, involvement with. There's one scheme about renewable energy, another about quality and then uh, electrical equipment more broadly. And then I guess, um, yeah, the IEC, sorry, is uh, relies on a lot of volunteers and, and technical experts to, to volunteer their time and, and help develop these standards. So there's 20,000 plus experts that have been involved, um, you know, that, that so many years of ex joint experience um, that helps influence and, and shapes these standards. So if we talk later on, how could you become involved with standards? You can definitely volunteer your time to contribute if you have a real interest and a real um, uh, relevance to that, that area that you're, you're interested in. So that's IEC at large. Um, and now we'll talk about the IEC Young Professional Program. So Mohammed, go, go for it. Uh, thank you, Carl. So talking about the program starting in 2010, the IEC established the Young Professional Program where young professionals from different countries gather during the yearly general meeting, the IEC's yearly general meeting, and have a few day workshop. So during the young professional workshop, participants meet other YPs, meet uh, IC officers, technical experts from all over the world. This offers the young professional the opportunity to see the IC in action. At the same time, the young professional benefits from the program by providing, uh, the pro program provides the YP an important uh, networking platform and a unique opportunity to help shape international standardization and conformity assessment work. The reason behind the establishment of the program is that the IEC believes that they can benefit from the increased participation of young experts from uh, different regions, different fields, who can bring new ideas to the IEC and come up with projects and ideas that benefit the IEC. So this year's uh, statistics, there will be about 90 plus YPs participating in the YP program in San Francisco. And this usually increases uh, every year. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Mohammed. And, um... I guess, yeah, like Mohammed said, it's all about diversity of age, trying to get younger people involved. Typically, standards um, development is by um, people of uh, in the older generations that have a lot of experience and a lot of uh, maybe some more time to dedicate to, to standards development. But it's the IEC sees such value in including um, younger um, technical experts in the development of standards, bringing that different point of view. So for those on the call who are close to studying or thinking of studying uh, a STEAM or STEM relevant uh, discipline or, or, or uh, course, I would definitely, or we all would really endorse pursuing this um, Young Professionals Program and making that a goal of yours from the back end. Um, if anyone's got any, well, Jason, if you've got any comments about your experience or um, please feel free to jump in. Yeah, so uh, I've worked in, so for me, I've worked in standards for 10 years now. And 
it was only with the IEC program that it really took off. So I just used standards for all those years. And since joining the program, I now get involved and help write those standards, which is really beneficial to myself and the company I work for, because for myself, I can get an idea on what changes are up and coming in the standards. And then for my company, we can have our input and make um, positive change that we see in the standards to improve safety and reliability um, in, the, in the standards themselves, which will then you know, cover every manufacturer of products using those particular standards and just make the world a better, safer, safer place. Yeah, excellent. No, I, I found, found the same thing. It, it opens a lot of doors and you get to experience a lot of things typically you wouldn't, you wouldn't really get a chance to. Such a great introduction to the world of standards and conforming assessments. So um, I just might make a comment that each national committee, um, so for instance, Australia, um, uh, the UK and Dubai, they have their own standards bodies and they hold a similar style program in their countries. So um, that's also just something to call out. Um, that's another thing that you can target for, for those on the on the call, wherever you're from and whatever country you're in, your own country will have their standards body and you can reach out to them to become involved from an, from an early stage. All right, we'll, we'll skip, to, we'll go to the next question. And um, this one's really for uh, Jason and Mohammed. Um, so maybe Jason, if you want to go first and then Mohammed, and this is all about how standards are used and, and you know, come, please come at it from a general perspective and then also um, your your experience and the way you use standards. Yeah, I'll go first on this one. Uh, so standards are used in all different ways. So manufacturers will use standards different to how governments use standards. So for example, a government would use a standard to reference in laws. So sometimes the, they'll, they'll make a law quite general um, for products that have uh, low risk to uh, use as customers and, and the likes. But for some products which are quite hazardous, so fire alarm products or um, you know, like a fire extinguisher or anything which poses a risk to safety, then standards will quite often be referenced in law. Um, but also standards can be used for architects and civil engineers when developing cities, uh, designing buildings, um, and it's not only for safety, but like Colin mentioned earlier, it's to ensure that that product is, or that building is designed in a way that it doesn't cause any issues with steps being out of line. And you know, the other example was uh, car parking spaces, the lines being painted in the right place. And if I just touch on how I use standards daily, so my role is fully focused on standards. So every day I'm, I'm reading standards, I'm then assessing the company's products against those standards, do they comply, um, then development testing sequences and programs for the company to carry out. And then we use the IEC's um, conformity assessment scheme for explosive equipment to then open and remove those barriers to trade for around the world. Excellent. Thanks, Jason. And Mohammed, please go ahead. Uh, sure. Uh, Jason may have talked about standards. Uh, so from the point of view of standards, standards provide written instructions. Here, the conformity assessment verifies that these instructions are properly applied in real world technical devices and system. So in my case, working for a regulator, we go into conformity assessment activities more than standards. So I'll be talking about conformity assessment example. So if I go into, for example, the technical standards for the safety and effectiveness of medical electrical equipment, this is provided by the IEC as a standard. Here, any manufacturer designing and building up the equipment can apply these standards. There are lots of manufacturers out there, lots of designs, and in order to show that these manufacturers actually comply with the standards, here is what we call the conformity assessment. And going back to the regulator's role, we verify that 
the conformity assessment has been, has been done and that the equipment passed the conformity assessment in order to allow these equipments to actually be used in the country. Excellent. Thanks, Mohammed. Yeah, I mean, we've been talking about the fact that standards is across everything. And like you just mentioned, um, the medical field is such an important area where standards is, is applicable. It's got a really, um, you've got to hit the mark when you're talking about things that involve people's health and, and, and that. So um, I guess we've, we've got all other examples we could give. I mean, for, for those on the calls, uh, different sporting equipment that you might use or um, toys that you might have used when you were younger or toys that you might be buying for, for your, your nieces and nephews or cousins or, or those people um, in, the, in their younger, younger part of their life. There's a real important element to making sure those products are safe um, and reliable. So there's a lot of standards and a lot of conformity assessment involved with just simply the, the toys that we might have used when we were younger. So um, a real important element. All right, well, thanks everyone for, for putting their um, Q&A questions uh, and please keep going and, and putting those in there. Um, uh, there's not too many that are relevant for us, but yeah, please continue to, to put the, the, um, the questions in there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna shift in we might ask some verbal questions or we'll put the question on the slide for um, people to, to maybe answer in the Q&A box. So just feel free to don't write a question, just, just answer the, the, the question here. And, and that might be a good way for us to get some back and forth with, with you all and, and get a chance to, to have a bit of dialogue. So if you can, just pop it in that Q&A box. Can you name something that is designed to a standard? And maybe that's something that you're looking at right now in the room. Um, might be a chance to, to, just, um, to just record something in the Q&A as to, to, to something that you think is designed to a standard. And I'm, I guess I'm going to use a simple example here. I'm, I'm sitting here talking to you um, in front of my laptop. So the laptop itself um, conforms to a number of standards and has been gone through a number of conformity assessment style um, activities to make sure that what I got, what I bought, met all those standards. Um, we're getting some, some responses in the chat. So great work of uh, the Q&A. Uh, we've got light bulbs, things like uh, a bed or a phones, phones especially, definitely. Um, pillows, yeah, that's great. Cars and electronics, printers. Yeah, these are all great examples of things that people might be looking at or able to see right now. Fans, yeah, very true. So most things that we're, uh, we're exposed to. Um, yeah, and, and Jason, Mohammed, or Thomas, feel free to jump in and, and name something that you're passionate about or something that you, you think standards applies to. Um, I'll just give one interesting example was in my university, my first real understanding or involvement with standards was we had to look at um, bed mattresses for prisons and the flammability of those um, mattresses because in case you know there was a prison riot and people could sit as many things on fire. So that was just a, a weird intro, introduction for me for standards. I, I didn't really understand what they're all about. And then, yeah, just, just starting to understand that element of it. So yeah, uh, Jason or, or Muhammad or Thomas, what, what are your examples? Yeah, uh, I've... Oh, go on. Um, so... I'll, I'll, I'll jump in there. Um, I'll go back to Colin's example uh, of the laptop. And one of the things that I see on the sides of the laptop are connectors. Uh, they might be power connectors or data connectors um, or, or video uh, connectors. Um, and it doesn't matter um, who has manufactured your laptop, hopefully, um, you still have a set of those connectors which are designed and included uh, to meet a standard. And so you can, you can use different devices from different manufacturers um, and they're, they're compatible together. So that's about 
um, these standards being in place uh, to improve um, usability um, and also improve trade. Yeah, awesome, Thomas. Mohammed, maybe you jump in next. Yeah, so example of standards, even if it's not actually shown, even when you go out to play football or play any of the sports, all these balls, all these nets, uh, uh, goals, all of these are done on a standard. There is a standard that governs all of these uh, things. So even in shoes, watches, everything, standards apply there. Great point, Mohammed And Jason, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think mine ties in perfectly with Mohammed's. It's You don't realise how many things are covered by a standard. You know, the, the chair you're sitting on, the laptop you're looking at, the door to the room that you're in, the windows, there's a standard for everything, pretty much. And if there isn't one, there probably soon will be. Um, so even new products like electric scooters, which are becoming very popular, there's a, there are standards for those which are in development. So whether that's safety, whether it's um, standards for just, just general design, usability, there is going to be a standard for everything very soon. Yeah, great point, Jason. There's, uh, yeah, standards are going to have to be very important in the future with the likes of renewable um, energy and renewable um, products, batteries in particular. That evolution has to be ha have a standards backing. So I'll just comment on a few a few others in the Q and A. Someone said TV, electrical outlets and plugs, uh, musical instruments, pesticide use, routers, cosmetic, farming practices and, and buildings. So all perfect examples, really good. Um, we might have asked the, everyone online as well, if you, this is quite a, might be a bit difficult for those who don't have a very in-depth uh, understanding, but if you can, do you know any specific standards or um, there's usually a number associated with a, a standard. It'll have a, a, a prefix like ISO or IEC uh, or your national um, national standards prefix. Then it might have a number and then it might have a, de a description out the back end. So maybe if um, you might go around the room here. Oh, yeah, someone's putting ISO um, 14001. So that's a great example and really... Um, glad someone was able to put a, a code in there. That's really impressive. Um, and I might just ask, go around the room, uh, start with Jason. Jason, could you just give us one standard that you know that you use quite often, or your favourite standard? Or um... so the standard which I use most often is um, the IEC six zero zero seven nine series. So that's a series of standards for explosion protection. So I think um, I think Thomas will be very familiar with that series of standards as well. Oh, excellent. Well, that's a good yeah example of exactly the what standard people or we use. Um, what about uh, Muhammad? What's the standard that you use? Uh, usually, when looking at medical equipment, it's mainly. IEC 60601 and then from 60601 there are like subsections and if I go to ISO usually use the ISO 17 or 25 for testing the uh, uh, laboratories. Yeah. Oh very good well thanks for that and Thomas what, what's your favorite standard or standard that you use very regularly? Yeah I'll, uh, I'll go with a national standard here in Australia um, it's one that I often use. Um, and in fact, I think it's the most used uh, standard in Australia, which is what we call AS3000. And it's our local wiring rule standard. So it defines how we wire up all of our houses, our buildings, um, and our products. Uh, and it makes sure that all of our electrical equipment um, is safe and it meets it, it's um, the... the um, it's easy to work to, for electricians to work on equipment because they know how it's been designed and they know what to expect. Oh, perfect. Well, thanks, Thomas. Um, yeah, we've got a few 
yeah, the ISO 14001, that, that's all about environmental management systems. So that's a great example that, that's been provided in the, in the Q&A. Uh, some other comments have been made that the CE um, reference, which is a conformity assessment marking. So that's a, a great call out as well, well done. Um, and if I had to just talk about myself, um, asset management, there's an ISO 55,000 series. So um, a number of standards with that 55,000 and there might be 55,000, 55,001, um, uh, 55,002 goes on, goes on and on. Um, and they're all about asset management. So uh, I use those standards a great deal. Thanks everyone for your input in the Q and A. That was really, really great. So we've, we've got about uh, nine-ish minutes. Um, what we might talk about now is standards and skills for life. So what this is all about is we know that skills for life is such an important element of, of the scouts and, and girl guides. Um, and we're going to talk about now what skills we've developed through standards, through the involvement in standards, um, through the use of standards, and, and what key skill we think um, we've developed and, and been able to uh, progress. So Thomas might start with you to just kick us off. So please go ahead. Thanks, Colin. Uh, we touched on it earlier, but uh, standards development committees are made up of subject matter experts um, who uh, represent their organization um, or national committee. Um, and they're, they're contributing to the standard. So technical, their technical skills are effectively given. We, um, they, they're, they're subject matter experts in a particular area, but they also need a range of, of other important skills um, to be effective committee members. Um, so just as important as technical knowledge is the ability to clearly and respectfully communicate the views of the organization or the nat national committee that you're representing. Um, the, best, the best idea um, is, is not a solution if you don't adequately communicate that uh, to the committee. So therefore an important part of the process is being able to effectively convey the views of your organization while building trust with the other committee members. Uh, effective communication also includes listening. Um, if differing views are expressed during the meeting, then careful, careful listening and problem solving can be critical in the process of reaching consensus, which is one of the key, uh, key components of, of a, a committee meeting and standards development. Um, we also touched on earlier, the development of standards need to stay ahead of consumer needs. Um, therefore, it's, it's natural that we need uh, technology leaders um, and contributors that have vision. We can, I'll, I'll summarize this as, as leadership skills, relationship building, conflict management, negotiation, communication, innovation, um, or vision are all skills that are likely to be developed through uh, the involvement in, with standards um, and can be directly applied to, to other areas of your life. Um, so um, I guess th those are some of the things that I pull out of, of um, being involved in standards and some of the skills that you will, will learn throughout that process. Excellent. Thanks, Thomas. Um, we'll go around the room if possible. Mohammed, if you had to pick one skill that you've developed, what would you pick? Uh, yeah, actually, if I have to pick up a skill, Usually with the IC and the participation within the interprofessional program, I would say that it's uh, effective communication with different people from different uh, nationalities, different accents, different uh, culture. And you get to know the people more and more and you get to know more about their culture, their interests. And this was one of the things that the IC and professional program really added to my uh, skills. Yeah, that's a great one. And, and Jason, what was your, what would you put as your number one skill that you've developed? So I think the skill that I've developed most is negotiation. So you're trying to build consensus and come to an agreement. So for example, in, in a 
committee meeting, the UK might have a, a different stance to Australia on a particular issue. Um, and it's all about just having those discussions, understanding everyone's point and where they're all coming from and what they're trying to achieve. And then just finding one uh, solution which benefits all. And that's probably the, the most beneficial skill that I've found that I'll take on for the rest of my life. No, thanks, Jason. Yeah, I, I agree. That, you know, a lot of the skills you learn with um, through this involvement, you know, you can use in your in your real life. It's not just a, a work life um, element. Um, yeah, I like all those that that were put forward. For me, I agree. I like the for, when when you're at, involved in at the international level, that engagement with all different cultures. That's that's really um, a great experience. Um, and negotiating those elements, like Jason said. And one that I would probably talk to is when you're a bit younger, you get to join the, like, like us, in, in, I guess, in the YP program, you get to join these committees that have the industry experts on them. They've got the best of the best and the people that know the most about the subject. So for young people, it's a great chance to, to learn from those people as well. So building your network of real um, industry leading experts and people to to form relationships with and and learn from so uh, i definitely um, put that forward as well so that's great well i'm looking at the chat there's nothing at the moment um so this is just a general one about future fields of standardization you know the, the standards touches a great deal of these fields in terms of energies uh we know your your uh, the scouts and girl guides is very um, involved with the SDGs and standardization almost touches all of those ones. Um, climate change and protecting the environment is going to be such a big part um, where standards will play a role, smart manufacturing, healthcare, uh, and all those areas. Um, we might just, we've got three minutes to go. So uh, there's no questions in the chat at the moment or the QA at the moment. So we might go forward and, and this will be our closing comments. Um, so I'll give every, everyone a chance to just give their, their final remark and maybe just leave um, the, the audience with a, a challenge or a resource or a, uh, an activity that they can go away and, and do outside of um, this session. So uh, Jason, did you want to start first? Sorry, Colin, I think some audio cut out a bit there. Could you just repeat that aspect? Oh no! I just said, yeah. Do you want to? Do you want to kick us off? You can just give us your closing comment and the challenge that you want to leave uh, the attendees with. Yeah. So I think just as a closing comment, I think you know, going away from this, I think it'd be really good if you just think about um, all the areas in life, just everyday life of where standards can have a benefit, just from what we've touched on. Um, and just the which goes into the challenge which uh, which we've put down there is in five minutes, how many things can you think of which will have a standard related to them? So we've had a bit of a taster just during this session on the Q and A, but if you spend five minutes and just list down as many as you can, and then I think you know it'll show how important standards are in life. Um, because like I say no matter what you list, there will be a standard for it. And there'll probably be multiple standards really in the different areas. Yeah, excellent. Thanks, Jason. Great, great closing comments. Mohammed, what about yourself? Uh, for to close, uh, I would give a word of advice to any of uh, the attendees that whenever they have a project or research that they work on just go and look at the standards related to this project or research. And you will find out lots of information that is easy access and it's not available, for example, in Google or on any searching search engine. So look at the standards, you'll get a lot of information. Perfect. Thanks, Mohammed. Excellent. And uh, Thomas, what about yourself? Thanks, Colin. Um, I really like Mohammed's close comment there about checking if there's uh, standards available for an area that you're working in um, 
and extending that if you are working in an area with standards um, think about is there anything missing from these standards um, and how can you get involved um, to contribute to that standard as well um, I guess my my maybe it's not so much a challenge but thoughts um, for those in the audience um, is to think about Wi-Fi so how do how do we get all of these different devices to communicate together um, and it's really um, amazing to think about um, how these are all, all these devices are able to communicate even though they're, they're, they're made by different manufacturers at different times um, they might be you might have a, a device that's eight years old and it's still able to communicate with a device that was designed yesterday. Um, so it really is a triumph of, of standardization. And if it's something that you're interested in, um, I think it's really interesting to look into how, um, how Wi-Fi has been standardized and all of the different um, components that have gone into that. And that's my, uh, my challenge, if you'd like to take that on. Excellent. Thanks, Thomas. And, and I'll, I'll just leave mine my closing comment is, uh, and, and thank everyone for joining us um, and, and taking some time to learn about standards and, and how um, standards in, are involved in, in the STEAM world. Um, and my challenge would be, if you look up the top there of that slide, you might see some symbols, uh, the CE one, which was, which was mentioned earlier. Uh, the, the middle one is an, uh, an Australian icon and, and the one on the left is a UK conformity assessment. Um, symbol. You might be able to have a look around your, heart, your house and find these sort of markings or even in other instances you might be able to look at products and see a reference to an actual standard. So um, I'd encourage you to do a bit of an easter egg hunt and um, see what you can find in terms of things in your house or, or uh, things in, in your, um, your area that might have that, that marking on it and you, that just shows you that a, there's a, a standard involved there um, so thanks everyone this is the the code that everyone will will want i think uh, monse has also put it in the the chat um, but yeah that's that's pretty much it so thanks everyone again appreciate your time uh, have a great rest of the joda jt and um, hopefully see you in the standards world at some stage Cheers. All right, I'll just end it there and, and sit. Thanks, everyone. Cheers, Mohammed. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, Thomas. Thank you, Colin. Cheers, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye.